Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll be discussing the deep fascia of the thigh and its modifications. The deep fascia of the thigh is a tough fibrous sheath that envelops the whole of the thigh like a sleeve. So you can say it is like a very tough layer that is covering your entire thigh and it runs from where to where. So let's talk about the fascia lata's superior attachment from where it is coming exactly. This is your hip bone, this is your sacrum, this is the iliac crest, this is your pubic tubercle, your inguinal ligament. So superiorly, the fascia lata extends from laterally the iliac crest, medially the pubic tubercle, anteriorly your inguinal ligament, posteriorly from your sacrum, from your gluteal region and it runs down imagine it is raining so just like that it rains down to enclose your entire thigh tightly and inferiorly the fascia lata goes to attach at the front and the sides of your knee so overall the definition of fascia lata is that it is a tough fibrous sheet that encloses the thigh like a sleeve superiorly it is attached to medially the pubic tubercle, laterally the iliac crest, anteriorly the inguinal ligament, and posteriorly the sacrum, the gluteal region, etc. Inferiorly, the fascia lata is attached to the front and the sides of your knee. So that was a brief introduction to fascia lata. What is important in the fascia lata is how it is modified, altered, or it is specialized to carry out certain functions. So what are these special modifications? The first one is known as the iliotibial tract. Suppose this is the fascia. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side. Lateral part of this fascia is thickened. This thickening, it runs superiorly from the iliac tubercle and the capsule of hip joint all the way inferiorly to the lateral condyle of the tibia. This long modification of the fascia lata is necessary for strengthening your knee while it is extending and while it is partially flexing. So whenever the knee joint undergoes extension or partial flexion, your iliotibial tract comes into play as it is going to stabilize the knee. The most important part about the iliotibial tract are what muscles are inserted into it. So never forget, this is a very important exam point of view question. The muscles inserted in the iliotibial tract are the gluteus maximus and a muscle that is going to carry out function over the fascia lata known as the tensor fascia lata. These two muscles are very important. So keep them in mind. Let's talk about the next modification of the fascia lata. This is known as the saphenous opening. The saphenous opening is an important opening through which the great saphenous vein or the long saphenous vein is going to pass through and enter into your femoral vein. As it is a superficial vein, it needs to go into the deep. And to, in order to go to the deep, you need an opening that provides access to your deep parts. The saphenous opening is a very important modification of the fascia lata and it lies, so we all know that this is the pubic tubercle, it lies 4 cm below and 4 cm lateral to the pubic tubercle. So imagine if this is the pubic tubercle, the saphenous opening lies 4 cm lateral and 4 cm below the pubic tubercle. This is a very important uh, point that 4 cm below and 4 cm lateral to the pubic tubercle it is a 2.5 cm long and 2 cm broad opening. Its lateral margin is crescent-like while its medial margin is lying a little deep. The most important part of this opening is that the saphenous vein enters your femoral vein through this saphenous opening. The saphenous opening is covered or closed up by a fascia known as the cribriform fascia. The cribriform fascia can also be 
known as a modification of the fascia lata. So if there is a fourth modification of the fascia lata, you can say it is a cribriform fascia, which basically covers up the saphenous opening. And final modification of the fascia lata includes the intermuscular septas. So let's imagine that this is the deep fascia of the thigh and this is the femur bone of your thigh and you are viewing this transverse section and imagine you're viewing it from the top. This is the femur and this is the fascia lata or the deep fascia of the thigh. We all know that laterally the fascia is thickened to form the iliotibial tract. So this is lateral, this is medial. We have intermuscular septas or modifications of the fascia lata that are going to divide your thigh into three compartments known as the anterior, posterior and medial compartment. So let's talk about the first septum. This is known as the lateral intermuscular septum which extends laterally from the iliotibial tract goes all the way till the lateral lip of the linea aspera. That is a bony feature of the femur. This separates the lateral intermuscular septum, separates the anterior compartment from the posterior compartment. Then we have the medial intermuscular septum, which extends from the medial lip of the linea aspera till the deep fascia of your thigh. This is known as the medial intermuscular septum. This separates the anterior compartment of the thigh from your medial compartment of the thigh. And finally, the fascia that is ill-defined and separates the posterior medial compartment of the thigh, known as the posterior intermuscular septum. So basically, these are modifications of the deep fascia that are running inside, towards the inside, so that the thigh can be divided into three compartments. And all these compartments have different muscles and vessels that we will discuss in the next lecture. So that was all you needed to know about the modifications of the fascia lata. We all know that there are about three modifications and cribriform fascia can be added into those modifications as well. That was all you needed to know for the fascia lata and the deep fascia of the thigh. Thank you so much for watching.